I'm Natalie Kunzman, MD, and I'm here to bring a topic to you today, again by request, and it is also sometimes considered a controversial subject because there is an Eastern side of this as well as a Western side, and I'm here to bring both sides of the vest and zipper it up and try to come up with a consensus opinion and a dialogue about how to approach your cholesterol prevention and treatment. Sometimes I think we're actually mixing up the topics of heart disease and clogged arteries and synonymously calling it cholesterol management. The Western model focuses on the broken pieces and the disease of heart disease and renders a treatment for it. And the Eastern side focuses on giving the body all the right component pieces to correct itself. And in the way I practice, I believe there's a place for both prevention, wellness, and disease treatment. So there is a way to bridge the Eastern and the Western philosophies with cholesterol management. So what is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a compound that is primarily manufactured in the liver and it has very efficiently and wonderfully been constructed in our bodies because we use it for a lot of purposes. One is for the cell wall management. 40% of our brain has cholesterol for protection and myelin sheathing to help the electrical signal um, conduction. Cholesterol also creates our sex hormones. So we're talking about estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. It is also the base compound for vitamin D. It also is needed to make bile, and bile is mandatory to help us break down our fats. And it's also a precursor to cortisol. It was discovered in the 1700s, and it actually means coli, which is bile, and sterile, which is solid, cholesterol, cholesterol, meaning solid bile. And there were a lot of hypotheses over time regarding cholesterol, testing, its presence, its meanings, and does it cause disease. And we need to be very clear about cholesterol versus lipoproteins. So when we hear some slang terminology about HDL and LDL being good and bad cholesterol, and just so you know, there's actually other lipoproteins such as VLDL and chylomicrons, we're actually talking about cholesterol carriers that are made up of the cholesterol and protein moieties to actually keep them water soluble so that they can transport the cholesterol through the tissue and get to different sites for either manufacturing of the hormones or uses at the cell wall in the brain, etc. So when we're talking about that good and bad cholesterol, I need to state right out front that cholesterol is always good. And the lipoprotein carriers, which have been nicknamed good and bad cholesterol, is actually what we're talking about. And those are what the nicknames are based upon today's current knowledge base. So we need to know why cholesterol has gotten such a bad rap. Atherosclerosis, which is actually the clogged artery terminology, it was discovered in its very early days as having a lot of cholesterol in those areas of the blockages and plaque buildup. But now that we know the true anatomy and biochemistry of the blockage, it comes from an area of trauma in the artery 
Then there is some fibrin clotty debris and some cells called foam cells. And cholesterol happens to be the band-aid on top of the whole area. So it has been described that the cholesterol is found at the scene of the crime, but not the perpetrator. And I actually heard another good analysis that would you blame the fireman for showing up at the fire? I think we've gotten very confused in our terminology. And when we are treating cardiovascular disease and plaque buildup, we say we're treating cholesterol. Now, there are many reasons why that artery can be traumatized or inflamed, causing atherosclerosis and the blockages. The biggies should be pretty obvious, but I will restate them. The biggies are smoking, and that creates a free radical trauma to the artery. Hypertension, which is pressure in that artery. Elevated sugars, which is diabetes. And the way that happens is the red blood cell, as it's getting sugar coated, becomes very sticky and adherent, but also spiky, which reminds me of a cat of nine tails trying to get through that artery, causing a lot of trauma. And then the triglycerides, which are some of the fatty acid packages, which we talked about in the previous lecture, are very traumatizing and harmful to the artery. And if we can remember that cholesterol is the innocent bystander, we are actually looking at the lipoproteins and most of our risk reduction to prevent heart disease is not so much on cholesterol management, but it's actually on controlling the sugars and your diabetic management, controlling your blood pressure, controlling obesity, and that's a topic for another day, but obesity has a lot of other inflammatory markers that will circulate in the artery, and stopping smoking. Since the early discovery of cholesterol being found in the plaque, discoveries were made in the 50s and 60s to help try to manage and quiet down cholesterol. So some of the initial treatments when we had the atherosclerosis, so these were treatments and not necessarily preventions, we had niacin, which is one of the B vitamins, and fibrates were made. And somewhat accidentally, statins were discovered. And just so you know what the statins are, I'll give some common terms such as Lipitor, Zocor, Crestor, Lovastatin. We found that potentially, or the hope was potentially, if we blanketly pulled that cholesterol down, that we would quiet down heart attacks and atherosclerosis very effectively. However, this is not true. Many who suffer from heart attacks even have normal cholesterol levels. Statins have been researched widely since the 70s and in the preventive arm of statins, they may lower cholesterol, and indeed they do very effectively lower cholesterol, but that's just treating a lab. For women, young men, older folks, for a preventive purpose, they don't do much to prevent heart disease and heart attacks. There is one secret capability of the statins, and they have an anti-inflammatory effect, and even to a small degree, a blood thinner. So the evidence that has been out over time does show that a statin will work quite well 
at prevention of a second MI uh, and treatment of atherosclerosis in a middle-aged male who already has the plaque buildup in the arteries. And there are the rare subsect of familial genetic dyslipidemias that may benefit on a case-to-case -case basis. So there are a few compelling reasons for use of a statin when a big gun is needed. Now, I will also make a little bit of commentary that there is some building evidence that in diabetic patients, a low dose statin could prevent heart disease with the theory that if you have diabetes, you already have endothelial damage or you already have some early plaque buildup. And in that regard, this may wind up preventing your first MI. However, there needs to be more robust studies on this topic. So you may ask me, what are the downsides of statin therapies? And there are many. First of all, some of the reasons why there are so many downsides is that it depletes our body of CoQ10. Now, CoQ10 is a, an enzyme that's critical for our mitochondria and their energy production. Now, mitochondria are the little battery packs that we walk around with that are heavily um, in a heavy percentage in our muscle. So we have skeletal muscle and we have cardiac muscle. So depleting the CoQ10, if you think through this, we are trying to prevent an artery from blockage, but we are at the mercy of quieting or cutting down CoQ10, which is essential for that muscle, that cardiac muscle, that heart muscle to contract. So if not managed properly, the statin can contribute to a cardiomyopathy, which is a heart failure or a pump failure of that muscle. Statins wipe out a lot of our cholesterol needed for our hormone base. So for you men, that would be cutting down testosterone. For us women, it would be estrogen and progesterone. It can also cut down our vitamin D synthesis. It will dramatically cut down our myelin sheathing in our brains and our brain insulation for the conduction of the electrical circuits. So of course, this will lead to dementias, poor brain function, memory impairment, and several other neurologic diseases. So it is not advised in the advanced elderly. Therefore, statins have a high rate of muscle breakdown, pain, and atrophy in the skeletal muscle. By the way the statins work, by reducing HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor in the liver, we can now have liver inflammation. So you can have a statin-induced hepatitis. Statins may cause neuropathy, which is a nerve degeneration. Statins may also compound or worsen depression, which obviously goes hand in hand with our brain health and our hormones related to our neurochemicals in the brain. So the bottom line is we were not born with a statin deficiency. So what can we do? Well, there are natural ways and regenerative ways and ways for thy body to help itself to manage your cardiac prevention, artery health, and of course the slang terminology, controlling your cholesterol. First and foremost, and I have said this in our fatty liver discussion, we need to stop smoking. 
Smoking cause our, causes arterial damage with free radical production. We must keep our weight fit and trim. It is imperative that we manage our sugars. Stress reduction in any capacity to help keep our blood pressure low. And there's a lot of budding evidence now with heart disease and overall health management with simple techniques such as meditation. Fish oils, particularly DHA, help keep the artery nice and soft and compliant and actually protect from some of those triglycerides that might be circulating around as well as the sticky hemoglobin circulating through from diabetes. Resveratrol. I brought this up at a previous topic and resveratrol is the active sirtuin a chemical compound that's found in the grapeseed skin, which is so wonderfully absorbed when we have red wine. Believe it or not, increasing our sleep hygiene has tremendous benefits on heart prevention and heart treatment, and actually for several neurologic conditions as well. And we can improve our sleep by grounding, which we talked about when we were talking about Schumann resonance and the EMF pulsating of the Earth's vibration. We can improve our sleep with melatonin, blocking EMF with amber lighting, magnesium, 5-HTP. We also can help with heart disease with some L-theanine. Emotional states have been studied and its effect on heart disease. So poor emotional states seem to promote coronary artery disease. And the opposite is actually true for prevention and heart wellness. So that social activities, enjoying intimacy and connections with others will improve heart health. If I can stress one topic that can prevent so many things in our lives, it is intense exercise. Walking is plenty, if that's all the joints can handle. The body wants a half hour a day, I strongly recommend an hour. Please, let us consider a high plant-based diet. There may be a role for ketogenic, certainly low carb, non-processed food, and there has never been a vegetable that has been accused of clogging an artery. So I hope we have clarified some terms such that the bottom line is, there is a very small niche for statins in middle-aged men who have plaque build up already in the artery, the rare familial dyslipidemias, the potential for the severe diabetic patient, and everyone else, it is not needed, will cause harm, and really needs to be considered on a case-to-case -case basis after all of the wellness techniques have been embraced to help prevent heart disease and treat heart disease. So I would say eat well, keep it moving, strongly considered some of the wellness techniques that I brought up. If there are any questions regarding specific questions you may have about cholesterol, please leave your comments below and I will get back to you. Please subscribe to my channel so we can have more discussions together for topics that are on your mind. Today's topic was from a viewer, so I hope she enjoys this. And until we meet again, be well.